Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Ramsey Custom Shop. This is Gary, and this is going to be part two of our poor man's DIY ironworker build. And uh, some of you know I've, I've had this uh, DeWalt chop saw for quite a long time, and it's been a great saw. And uh, some of you may remember I had a build video a few years ago on making these receiver hitch style mounts so that I could easily uh, remove it or install it on the table if I needed to. Now I had a tight fit on this thing so it didn't exactly slide in and slide out very easily but you know the fact of the matter is I never really slid it out. I always you know kept it in the same position basically. So again we're building this uh, poor man's iron worker so we can nip off parts really quickly really easily it's going to be on a standalone cart that we're building in this video it'll be stationed at the end of my table but i can move it if i need to so here we are cutting out some two inch square tubing on our ls bandsaw just giving you some different looks at you know making the cut squaring things up and uh right here we're we're cutting out some little two inch pieces that you'll see how we're going to be using these these are going to be kind of receiver tubes and I think kind of an interesting way to do miters or corners, you know, you've got a miter joint, you've got a coke joint, and then we're going to use these little two inch blocks flipped vertically to serve as a corner joint as well. It should help us get things really square really easily. So we're just doing a little cleanup and deburring here. And right now, real quick, you can see the mock up here on the table. And this is going to be kind of the frame or the base uh, for the cart. You can see those little corner blocks that we use there. So here I'm using the Reed Eichner supplied fireball tool squares. He sent me a couple of different ones and these really are handy tools and you'll see more about that in a little bit. So over on the lathe, we're making the leveling feet and these are some off cut one and a quarter inch bolts that I use on those table kits that I make and sell. And what I'm doing here is I'm just turning down the end a little about an eighth inch uh, shoulder that will get rid of the threads, create a squareness, and you know the, those threads have some uh, coating and stuff on them. It's turning that off on it, and you'll see we're going to make a little pad uh, here in a second. So I made all those the same. Once I made one and got the threads down to the level I wanted them, um, then I just chucked the other ones up. You know, kept the cross slot in the same position, and ran it in and nipped off those threads. So. What I used here is I had a whole bunch of these little, uh, I don't know what you call them. I got them at Harbor Freight. They're little ball bearing uh, eyelet things. I don't know. You, you can use them to uh, slide things on. You can use them for a number of different things. I bought all these and I was going to make some stuff around my plasma table to make it easier to get uh, parts on and off. And I never used them and they've just been in the box. And so I thought I'd use them for this. Kind of an interesting thing. And you know, we'll see how well it works out. But I was just taking some measurements off of that. And um, what I'm making here are some, you know, corner joints on the, on the plasma table. And I also made some little leveling pads that you'll see right here. Um, I didn't show those being cut out. But those leveling, or, or the pads actually made up to those little conveyor guys and you can see i'm you know the center hole i'm using here to use that little shoulder to to square up against it and i've got the bolt in there to you know make sure everything stays square and once you put a tack in it'll actually suck itself down to the squareness of the bolt onto the threads and then you can you know weld the rest of it up so um and then you saw that other piece that i made the angle corner bracket piece and with a hole in the center of it. So here you see I'm using the nut part of it. Again, these are gonna be leveling feet and uh, you'll see it coming together here shortly. Again, this is our poor man's DIY iron worker and this is the cart that the iron worker, you know, is gonna uh, reside on. And we're gonna probably make more modifications to the cart in the future to, uh, you know, figure out how we want to lay everything out, but this is going to be the basic skeleton of the cart with the leveling feet. The leveling feet are important because I really want this thing to, to be perfectly level with the edge of my table and my table is on caster. So, and occasionally I move it around to different positions 
And as you well know, when you move things around on a concrete floor, it's not exactly level. So if you move it to a different spot, it's important to be able to adjust the, uh, the iron worker, kind of have an infinite adjustment. So you always have the, the surface of the iron worker at the same level as the table. All right, so now we're back on our, um, on the frame and you see I'm using the clamps and the sort of flat table to get those little end tubes uh, on here and squared up and pushed into place and leveled up so that I could get some tacks on it. And you're seeing a close up here and you'll notice that I was putting the tacks on the uh, on the little outer edge of it, you know, and really small tacks. And that's important. You see, I flip it over and you don't want those tacks kind of causing you any issues with getting it to lay flat and being able to get things square. So I really like this way of making a square frame, you know, in a base because, you know, it just kind of helps you with not having to do miters or cope joints or, and if you do, if you end up doing a butt joint, you end up with an open tube on one end and you've got to make a cap for it. But we ended up making caps for this anyway because of the way we're using the, the leveling feet. Again, we're seeing everything all squared up. And, you know, why not use as many clamps as I can? You know, let's let's try to get this thing to stay in place. Let's square it up with fireball clamps. Um, many of the clamps that you see being used in this that, you know, Reed Eichner, he's not really a sponsor or anything. He's just a friend. He's a YouTube, uh, you know, watches all the other YouTubers and machinists out there and he's a great fabricator in his own right so he just likes to support everybody or a few of the guys that he's chosen to support and a lot of times when he buys something new for his shop which he's got a really nice shop he's got a strong hand build pro table um, if he buys new clamps he'll buy a few extras and send them out to a couple of guys here and there so i've always really appreciated that and you notice early in this that i was tig welding everything and all those little plasma brackets that i made you know they honestly i was you can't really weld a plasma edge really well at all with a with a TIG because it spatters and you know blows out your tungsten and you're just constantly sharpening your tungsten. So I switched over to the MIG. It's a lot faster. It really uh, does a really quick job on uh, you know on doing this kind of stuff. And uh, so we got the frame all welded up, and here's just a shot of you know, showing that it, you know, how well it rolls. I, you know, again, I did a little eyeball on the adjustment when it was on the table and eventually got, you know, got it adjusted where it was not teetering or rocking. And uh, you see there, it rolls pretty good for those little eyelet holes. They're, those little holes are probably, or those little ball bearing rollers are probably more sub subject to, uh, you know, little things on your shop floor or whatever. But I keep my floor sweep, swept up pretty good. I sweep it every couple of days. So um seems to be working out pretty good. You can see the iron worker frame on there. Just getting a few measurements here of how far the holes in are off the edge so that I can make a um, uh, some some tabs. And you'll see that here in a minute. So I'm getting some uprights made that'll, that are going to get our general... Uh, spacing needed to get us up pretty close to the height of the of the surface of the table and again using the mig using the fireball square uh to get a few tacks on it and now you see uh kind of where where we're going here and here you see the the uh little tab deals i'm getting cut out and what i'm kind of trying to do is use minimal amount of materials use off cuts use you know you can see this quarter inch plate is just areas that that of a table kit that were available uh, so i'm trying to use as many things around the shop that i have available to me without buying something specific or you know using too many materials so you can see what one of the things i'm using is the you know the frame of the iron worker is really rigid and you know i'm kind of using that as a cross tube kind of like you know the roof of a car in a uni, unibody construction is part of the structural member so um and you see it's got those tabs that we made that bolts in place all that fit up really well and you can see the edge of the table you know is really close to the height we'll get that dialed in on that so this will wrap up parts uh two if you're interested in 
seeing all the build videos on this and what it actually turned out like. If you check the center of the screen right here, you're going to see a, uh, a playlist that's going to have all the videos in this series, including the very latest ones and the final build. And we're also going to have plans available that you can purchase and maybe possibly kits with all the plasma cut parts as well. So um, hope you guys enjoyed all the fabrication on this one and we'll see you next time.